let's talk macro photography and my top five tips. <laughs> Hello, welcome to NStudio, I'm Ian M. Butterfield. Macro photography. What is macro photography? Well, technically speaking, it's any time the image on the sensor is the same size or larger than the subject in real life. However, these days with smaller sensors and increased optics, I think we can be a little bit loose on that, uh, that definition. For the purposes of this video, let's define macro photography as any close-up uh, photography. That might be of flowers, insects, or tabletop photography as well. So here are my top five tips for improving your macro photography. Tip one, it's all about the glass. It's often said in photography that the most important thing is the glass or lens that you're working with. And this is especially true with macro photography. I normally recommend getting a dedicated prime lens for uh, macro photography. Uh, most macro lenses seem to be around about the 100, 105 millimeter, uh, which actually is, is a great lens um, to, uh, to work with. Things to avoid with that are the, the zoom lenses that maybe 28 to 105 millimeter or 28 to 300 millimeter, which claim to have a macro setting on there. The reality is you're not going to get um, decent images with that kind of macro setting. You want something that's prime lens that's dedicated to it, that enables you to focus close. So what do you do if you haven't got a dedicated macro lens and still want to have a go at macro photography? Well, the solution is something like these. These are extension tubes. And extension tubes just literally fit between the lens and the camera body. So I can pop that on there and then place that on that and that will enable me to focus closer move the camera closer to be able to focus uh, thus making the image appear larger there are a few downsides to using extension tubes uh, most notably that most of the electronic signals don't tend to go through to the lens which means you will lose automatic focus now that's not a big deal as we'll see later because I normally recommend using manual focus but more importantly is you will have trouble um, setting the aperture because if that signal is not being passed through you can't choose, you can't set the aperture now if you've got um, a dial for setting it on your lens that's not a problem if you have to do it through the electronics the solution is to have your lens connected to the camera without the macro tube and I'll just pop that one on there out of the way. Set your aperture that you want uh, on the lens. So in my case, I'm going to say I want f18 for sake of argument. And now hold your depth of field preview button and then remove the lens. What will happen is the aperture will already be set on there and it will remain set when you connect it back to your extension tubes. That's how it works on Canon. I presume the similar systems will work with other cameras, but being a Canon user, I don't know for sure. Tip two, the right tripod. When you're doing macro photography, your depth of field is in terms of millimeters. So the slightest vibration with your tripod can cause a blurred image. Because of that, you need one that's really sturdy. The heavier and the sturdier, the better. If possible, try and find one that's got uh, a hook on it such that you can hang a bag or a weight on it for extra stability. If you are doing tabletop uh, macro photography or you're photographing flowers, 
directly from above, look for a tripod that has the option of undoing the central column and moving it across and over 90 degrees. This will enable you to get the camera into positions that a standard tripod won't allow. Oh, and one other tip on that, just be careful where you connect the stock, the, uh, the central column, because if you bring it out too far and don't weight down the tripod, as you can see, it begins to tilt. So always bring it a reasonable way back and if possible, add a counterweight on the end to balance it and to steady the, the, uh, the tripod. Another feature that you might want to look for with a tripod is to look for one where the legs can be splayed out. Uh, as you can see here, I've uh, uh, splayed the legs out. I've still got the column at 90 degrees, which allows me to position the camera really close to the flower that I, I want to photograph. Tip three, focus on focusing. Focusing for macro photography uh, can be quite tricky and autofocus generally doesn't cut it. So make sure your camera is in manual mode. And I always recommend if you've got live view with your camera, enable that because that will allow you to see the image on the back of the camera. Not only that, but you can also zoom in uh, five times or ten times and you can then adjust your focus, your critical focus at that point to make sure what it is you want to have in focus is in focus. If you have a set of focusing rails, you might find those useful um, and it's sometimes easier to use the little thumb, thumb wheel on focusing rails to do the focusing rather than turning the uh, uh, focusing control on the lens. I'll talk a little bit more about focusing rails in my next tip about depth of field. I find back button focusing can be helpful with macro photography. If you're set up for that, you've got the best of both worlds. Press the button, it will auto-focus and generally get you fairly close to what you want. You can then manually focus from that point on to fine-tune it. Tip four, depth of field and focus stacking. The closer you are to your subject and the greater the magnification, the shallower the depth of field. This means you need to choose a small aperture or large F number uh, to get the biggest depth of field possible. But be careful not to go too far because most lenses aren't at their sharpest uh, when you're working at very small apertures. Now, what this means is that for most subjects, you're not going to have the whole subject in focus. So where do you focus? Well, if your subject has eyes, then obviously focus on those. If it's a flower and the, the stamen is visible, Try focusing on the end of there. I find that uh, that usually works quite well. Now, if you want a much wider depth of field than is possible, consider using a technique called focus stacking. Now, I'm going to release a video specifically on this uh, in, uh, in a short while. Uh, with the setup that you can see here. But it involves using focusing rails and taking multiple images and then combining them together in Photoshop so you get one image where the whole subject is in really sharp focus. So look out for that video and subscribe to the channel to make sure you don't miss it. Tip five, don't forget how to compose one of the biggest mistakes I see with macro photography is people forget how to compose images and they end up with the subject bang in the middle of the frame and that's very rarely the best place for it. Remember the general rules of composition, things like the rule of thirds. Or what about filling the frame? That's particularly powerful if you're photographing a flower. Or maybe there's a stem that you can use as a lead in line to draw your viewer into the image. Also, don't forget about the background. 
If you've got bright areas in the background, this can draw your viewer's eye away from your subject. Whatever it is you're photographing at a macro level, remember to use the same techniques you would if you were photographing anything else. The rules of composition still apply. Bonus tip, avoiding camera shake. The slightest vibration just touching the tripod or holding the camera can be enough to ruin a macro shot. So the bonus tip is use a cable release or a remote shutter release. You can see I've got mine attached on the top of here and that means I can come away from the uh, away from the tripod and I can still take the shot without touching it to avoid vibration. Another source of vibration for a DSLR can be the mirror flipping up into place. Uh, to avoid this, either use live view, which means the mirror is already out of place, or if you're not doing that, then use mirror lockup. You can enable mirror lockup through the, the men menu, and what this will mean is that you have to hit the, uh, the release twice, the first time will cause the mirror to move out of play, out of the way. The second time just um, creates the shot. So allow a second or so between the two, and that will help reduce any vibration uh, from the camera. Thanks for watching my top five tips on macro photography. If you want to continue uh, learning and improving your photography, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss future videos. Also, don't forget to like and comment on this video and share it with your friends. To continue learning and improving your photography, why not watch one of the videos that's on the screen now? Until next time, keep making great photos. Bye for now.